they said unto me, Come, let us go into the house of the Lord. But this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And the church said, Amen. The church said, Amen. One more time. Amen. We are grateful to God this morning for another opportunity that we can come together and to worship and glorify God and give God praise for all that he has done and for all that he's even doing right now. Amen. And for those of you that are on social media that have chosen to worship with us this morning, we thank God for you. And as I always say, I know that God has a word for us this morning. So uh, we give uh, praise and glory and honor to God for you this morning. For those of you that are in our sanctuary, if you would stand with us as uh, we go before the Lord in prayer this morning. Let's pray. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, we bow our heads before you once again with our hearts humble. We give thanks unto you for this day. We give thanks unto you for all of the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Father, we thank you for this another opportunity that uh, we have that we can come together, we can assemble ourselves together once again to worship and to glorify your name, to encourage each other, one another. Father, we uh, thank you for life, we thank you for health, we thank you for strength, Father, we thank you for this, this week's journey. We thank you for the valleys, and we thank you for the mountains. We thank you for the storms, oh God. And we know that through it all, oh God, that you have been with us. You kept us, and you brought us to this place at this appointed time. So God, we thank you. We worship when we glorify your name. We invite the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place this morning. God, we ask that you will move by your spirit, oh God, that you will speak to our hearts this morning. Oh God, that we may be filled, that we may encourage for the journey that is ahead of us. God, we lift up the man of God, our pastor, the preacher man who will come this morning, oh God, to divide, to rightly divide the word of truth. God, we pray that you will bring back to remembrance those things that you placed in your spirit, oh God, that we may receive them. God, we pray, God, that you will let a fresh anointing be upon his life, God. Oh, Lord, we pray for our mere cause as they sing songs of Zion this morning. Oh, God, anoint their voices. Even our musicians, oh, God, that they play the instruments this morning. Let everything that we do this morning, oh, God, be done to your glory. And, Father, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. If y'all don't mind, give the Lord a hand clap of praise this hallelujah, morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, can somebody just worship for a moment? Come on. Come on, hallelujah. We just bless your name. Oh, you're worthy of the glory, Jesus. You're worthy of the honor, Lord. Yeah. We have come into his house. And gathered in his name to worship him. Said we have come into his house. Gathered in his name to worship him. Said we have come into this house. Gathered. Brothers, help me out and sing. Let's worship. Come on, sing. So forget about yourself. So forget. Worship him. 
holy hands. Let us lift up holy. Come on and worship Him. So let's lift up holy
Say good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. In the way of announcements, we come thanking God for it. those that have really been blessed by the God moving in the midst of their lives and thanking them and using you, Macedonia, as a special way for those who've been sick and shut in those who are going through some difficult times, we appreciate getting your cards of thank you and recognizing what God is doing in our midst. For example, he's going to say, thank you for all your kindness. We are, gr we are gratefully acknowledging you for your kind expressions and sympathy during the time of bereavement. We extend our sincere gratitude for all of your love and well wish wishes. And this is thank you from the Bercy family, amen, for the, the, those who have reached out to them and shown them some love as well. Another thank you is from Brother Abraham Edwards, amen, and his family. Brother, Brother Abraham has been in the hospital, and he responded by saying, thank you, Macedonia, for your cards, for your uh, financial blessings, and most of all, for the prayers that you all have sent up on his behalf. So we thank God for Brother Edwards in a special way. Another Thanksgiving is from Brother Jerry Phillips. 
He says, thank you for your calls, your food, your flowers, amen, and most of all for your prayers during my time of hospitalization and recovery at home. Somebody say thank God for recovery. Thank God. Amen. That shows that God is still working within our lives. And he says, the light of God's love, and may, he, may God continue to bless you lo your loving hearts. And it's sincerely, Brother Jerry P. Phillips. Amen. We'd like to re uh, remind you that our 130th church anniversary is next Sunday next Sunday. So we hope that you will come out and join with us in the special celebration at the 8 o'clock service as well as the 1040, this 1045 service. We are asking those of you choir members that will be a collective rehearsal on this Wednesday, amen, at 7 p.m. This Wednesday at 7 p.m. So we are asking all choir members to join in us as we sing praises, amen, to our God. We see the theme for our anniversary is down through the years. Amen. We couldn't have made it without the Lord on our side. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. As we normally celebrate, our colors will be black and white this year. Amen. And as we normally celebrate, there is a $130 assessment for each family. Amen. Just a family been doing it for over 100 years as God has brought us through. So we're asking you to please be reminded of that. Amen. And come and join us for the special occasion. Do we have any visitors here today? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank God for home folks. All right. Yeah. We, we are grateful that you are here with us as we celebrate the goodness of our Lord. And if there are some visitors, we say welcome. We so enjoy having that fellowship with one another and those who are willing to worship with us. So please continue to show that love and come and be a part of that as well. Amen. We know that there is the home going of Brother Jimmy Franklin Jr. Amen. And his funeral will be sat Saturday at 10 a.m. And so we're asking all choir members to please join us with that special time if you would. All right? God bless you and may he keep you is our prayer. Thank you.
bow down before you. Lay all our cares at your feet, Lord. It hasn't been an easy week for some, but in spite of all that we've endured, you allowed us to make it into the house one more time. And for this we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, oh God. We lift up the shepherd of this house, oh God. Thank you for an humble-hearted man who, oh God, does all that he can physically and spiritually under your guidance do to make sure that the sheep are fed in this house. I thank you for the spirit of outreach that lives within these walls. Thank you for the love that flows from heart to heart and breath to breath. That's what family's all about. There's sickness at times, oh God, and there's strife in the midst sometimes. But through it all, your love abides. We thank you that we are here to give you glory, Lord. Thank you, oh God, in spite of ourselves, we still can say, thank you, Jesus. And you continue to look over us. You continue to draw us, oh God. Sometimes kicking and screaming. But in the end, we realize that you are what's best for us. Thank you for your mercy and your grace that you showed us early this morning. When you touched us, oh God, and allowed us to rise up one more time. We dressed ourselves, oh God, and we made it here <laughs> one more time. We lift up those who are in bereavement this morning, oh God. Only you, Master. Only you can ease and soothe those broken, wounded hearts and spirits. But we know that you're able to do it, Lord. You've done it more times than we could ever count for so many others. You always remember us in spite of us. We thank you for this service this morning. Thank you for the visitation of your spirit. We ask, oh God, that as the word comes forth, that you will anoint the shepherd, oh God, from the top of his head to the very soles of his feet. And then we ask that you would touch hearts this morning, oh God. Open us up, oh God, that we might hear and receive and grow to know how good you are, Lord. It's one thing to say how good you are, but it's another to know how good you are. Truly, you're a good God, and we want to say thank you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be accepted in your sight, oh God, for truly you are my strength and my redeemer. We thank you, we praise you, we bless your holy name. You're worthy, Lord. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
mention also that um, Sister Martha Scott's homegrowing service will be on Friday, October the 15th at 3 p.m. here at Macedonia. So we are asking those of you who will, friends and family members, to join with us as we celebrate our homegrowing as well. Amen. Amen. Our scriptures this morning are taken from Psalms 116. Amen. Verses 1 through 9. Amen. As we recognize God in our daily lives that we have before him. Amen. Let me ask you this question prior to reading this portion of scripture. Have you had to or do you deal with any of the trials and tribulations of this world? Are you dealing with sickness in your family members or in yourself? Do you sometimes wonder whether or not God is involved in the process of helping us and working within our lives that we may be able to overcome the snares of the devils, amen, the misgivings that our, thought, that our communities may have, the lies, amen, and the lack of hopeless hope that people experience within themselves. Well, I got good news for you today. Amen. Amen. The subject that we have for you is God's grace and mercy. God's grace and mercy. Let me read, read these portions of scripture for you, beginning with verse 1. I, have, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplication. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrow of death compass me, and the pain of hell get hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from Tears, amen. For thou hast all oh, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. The subject in these words that are shared reminds me so much of one of our uh, pastors who have gone home to be with the Lord. We call him the singing pastor, all right? And this was one of his favorite songs, okay? The, the grace and my grace and mercy, amen, follows us. This was brother, brother Kirby Frank, amen, talking about the grace and mercy of God and how he have continued to be with him and provide for him. This portion of Psalm, Psalm it says that David has written it, but it is also given uh, credit for the authorship of this song to Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, all right? The situation with King Hezekiah was that he had received a pronouncement upon his life that he was to get himself ready for death was at hand for him, all right? He was to prepare himself for the sickness that he was experiencing, all right? And so Hezekiah was troubled. Death will do that for you, right? Death will bring fear into some, but not mainly into those of us that love the Lord, okay? Yeah, your grace and mercy brought us through, Lord. Your grace and mercy blessed us that even in the midst of trial, even in the midst of a pandemic, amen, we can have the victory that is able to bring us over the level 
of sadness and amen and, and circumstances that so easily beset us. We have to be conscious of the fact that the devil would want to destroy each and every one of us. That's why we have things happening today with this pandemic. All right? We can see death all around us. Okay? We can hear God using the scientists, the doctors, the nurses, and using our very own in their praying and petitioning God, and yet they won't believe that God has a solution to even the pandemic. God comes in his time and not in our time. God moves when he determines the time is right. It is our responsibility to do exactly what Hezekiah did. After being told that time was short for him, he was prepared to die. Amen. Hezekiah went into his private room and turned down the, the, the pillar and began to pray to God. And God heard his prayer, all right, even in the midst. God showed Hezekiah that he heard his prayer by extending his life another 15 years. God is a good God, all right? That's what we have in this, force, in this portion of Scripture in 116 Psalms. That's why Hezekiah says the first thing is, amen, I love the Lord for he heard my cry, all right? That's a bold statement coming from Hezekiah that God was on his side and that's why he loved the Lord. Do you love the Lord today? Do you realize that you are here today because of the glory of God? God has heard your cry. He has heard your profession of faith, all right? And in so doing, we see that the psalmist says that that's why I love the Lord, because he did hear my cry. He was merciful unto me. Amen. And he continued to show forth that love that I am in need of. There are some portions of the scripture that I would like to expound on with you. For example, he says that in... in, in, in uh, Psalms 116 and verse 5, he says, Gracious is the Lord and righteous, yeah, because God is, amen, merciful unto us. We believe that as we recognize in that fifth verse, amen, of one Psalms 116, that God in his graciousness, when we talk of grace, we are talking about unmerited favor of God, all right? Yeah, Hezekiah is saying grace because he recognized that it's not by his own strength, not by his own power that he has experienced this extension of his life. I tell you, when you recognize what God is able to do, then you are able then to say, Lord, I thank you. All right? I thank you that you looked beyond my fault and saw my need. I know that I'm not the only one in here that God has responded to your needs. I mean, when I needed him, he was there most of all. When I needed someone to lift the burdens that were upon me, I know that my God is able. Somebody say he's able. Let not your hearts be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in Jesus Christ. That's where our help is. My problem may not be your problem. Your strength may not be my strength. Your weakness may not be my weakness. But whatever we're in need of, God hears our prayer. That's a reason to love the Lord. Amen. He sang that song. I love the Lord. He heard my cry and he pitied my every groan. God wants to answer your prayer. Don't give up. Don't cave in. And don't you quit because we have a gracious God. We have a God 
that is favorable unto us. When we talk of grace, we are talking of receiving the favor of God. When we talk of grace, we are talking about God showing us kindness. Amen. Kindness unto one that don't even deserve it. When we talk about grace, we're talking about one who's able to give to us compassion. Somebody say compassion. That is, God has pity upon us. God is Yahweh. He shows long-suffering in our situation. God is Yahweh. He's all-powerful. Everything is under his control. The pandemic is under his control. And in his time, he's going to get the victory. Somebody say, thank you, Lord, for the victory that I have. This joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away because of the grace of God and his unmerited favor. I'm able to experience his benefit. God is able, I tell you, to make the storms and the waves obey his will. He's able to speak and my peace he can speak unto us if we will just trust in him. His benefits are for our behalf. Not only that, but when we think of what Hezekiah was experiencing, he talks of God's righteousness. All right? His righteousness comes forth in that fifth verse as well. He says, gracious is the Lord and righteousness, yea, of God. Our God is merciful. I like it. He used righteousness and he says yea unto that. Righteousness, we must understand, is God's authority and God alone. Yes. All right? We are not righteous. But when we accept Christ as our personal Savior, all right, righteousness is accounted unto us as being right. God is always right. God has established a standard by which every man on this earth, if they are willing to abide by his standard, his standard is the Bible, his standard is the Holy Word, his promises are given unto us. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, but I will be with you always. I don't care what a pandemic will bring. God is still with us. I'm like David. David says, where can I go and God not be there? If I ascend into the highest mountain, thou art there. If I descend into the lowest valley, thou art there. There is no place that God is not there. So you just need to call upon him. Recognize what he's able to do within our life. Amen. His righteousness is like power unto us. The Bible talks of Isaiah's situation. When Isaiah on the earth looked up and he saw heaven. And when he saw heaven, he saw God sitting on the throne. All right? And God sitting on the throne brought out in him that how unworthy he was in terms of compared to God. He hollered, Isaiah hollered, woe is me. I'm a wretch undone. Oh, what about you today? You are no stronger than Isaiah. You are no power, less powerful than God Almighty. But you need to cry out, Lord, I need you. No matter what I'm going through, I need your help. For without you, I can do nothing. Amen. I need your righteousness, your standard as an armor bearer. I am standing on your promises, standing on the promises of God, my King. How long? Till eternal ages reign. Glory in the highest. I will shout. So anybody want to shout in him? Anybody recognize what God is doing in him? Who woke you up this morning? Who started you on your way? Who gave you power? So you ought to praise him. No matter what it looks like, 
You ought to praise Him. For He's still working it out. Work it out, Lord. Show me the way. Work it out, Lord. Give me your power in the midst of my life. Hezekiah, in his recognition of what God was able to do and who God was, he not only saw God's grace, he not only experienced God's righteousness, oh, but the mercy of God came before him. When we talk of mercy, Hezekiah in that fifth verse says, Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. How would you define mercy? All right? We know that mercy is connected most of the time with the word gracious. But mercy realizes that God is kind. All right? Kindness is mercy for God is loving in his kindness. All right? Not only that, but when we talk of mercy, we are talking of pity. God has pity upon us. All we deserve, hell is what we deserve, but God gives us his pity. All right? Not only that, but when we talk of mercy, we are talking of forgiveness. No matter what your sin may be, and believe me, you have sinned, all right? And you will sin. For the Bible says all, somebody say all in here, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God is on your side. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. He's on your side. No matter how dark the situation may seem, he's on your side. No matter how hard your job may be, God is on your side. No matter how difficult school may be, he's on your side. No matter how much man may hate you, God is still on your side. He is a forgiving God. He is, amen, a forgiving God because that's his quad, essential quality, if you would. Amen. God is rich in mercy. All right? Not only is he rich in physical things, houses and land, but he holds the wealth of the world in his hand. So if you need a wealth, a richest blessing, call on the name of the Lord. He will answer your prayer. He that call upon him, he will in no wise turn you away. Oh, he, uh, Hezekiah, continue to glorify God. And the more he talked about the glory of God, the more he realized that there was more to God than just being gracious, just being righteous, just being merciful. He thought about that situation and then in verse 8, he, the Lord delivered me, amen, from death, all right? How is that happening for us? In that eighth verse, for thou hast delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. All right? Salvation. Salvation is the thing that Hezekiah rejoiced in. When we accept Christ as our personal Savior, amen, then salvation belongs to us. Not because of what we've done, but what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. We used to sing a song in Alabama. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. He says, I love that old cross where the dearest and blessed for a world of love sick. Sinners were slain. Do you cherish the cross of Calvary? Do you recognize that it's because of what Jesus did on our behalf that we can celebrate? He hung there on the cross of Calvary. He did it for me and he did it for you. They nailed him to the cross. But you must understand, all the nails in hell couldn't have held him there. 
if he wanted to call, come down. The word says he could have called out 10,000 angels. Oh, but he stayed there on that old rugged cross. He stayed there for you, and he stayed there for me. Any good news today? God can move you away from death. Though the death angel come through, and believe me, he's coming through. I guarantee at least 90% of us in here know of or we have a relative that have died because of this virus. All right? And it serves as a warning for each and every one of us. Like the Egyptian, in the, when the Egyptian had the Israelites in captivity. All right? God told, told the, the, the Israelites, he said, look, I'm going to send a deaf angel through. All right? And he said, every one of you that believe, take some blood of the lamb and post it over your doorpost. All right? And he said, when, you, when the deaf angel come through and he see that blood, he'll pass on by. All right? Realize that we are fearing death in this world, but death can't hold us. The grave can't bind us. The God is able, I tell you. Recognize that if you would only believe and trust in God, God is using the doctor to try to get our attention. He's using medical to science. People talk about they got faith, all right? You better put your faith in Jesus, in his blood that he shed and do. Doctors, you, I mean, God used doctors. Come on. God used medicine and medical equipment. You mess around and have a toothache and watch what you do. Huh? You're going to sit up at home and do nothing? Talk about your faith in God? You better go to the dentist. All right? And let him work on you because God can use who he wants to use. I tell you, Moses was perplexed. At the, at the Red Sea. He stood there at the Red Sea after they had been set free out of Egypt. All right? And he, the people was grumbling. And he said, Lord, what are we going to do? And God told him, say, Moses, what's that in your hand? Just a stick. Just a stick. He said, put that stick out over the wall. And lo and behold, the wall opened up. God can use what he wants to use. God can use what he can. Just give your heart to God. God, I can do it, I tell you. He can do it. He can take you from the death and give you life eternity. Why? Because Jesus came. He came that we could have life and have it more abundantly. But it didn't end there. God is able to wash away the tears that we shed. That's what Hezekiah said. He delivered me. He delivered my soul from death and my eyes from tears. All right? God is able to wash away your tears that you shed. Doesn't mean you're not going to have tears, but it means that God can help you through it. All right? God can bring you through. Just as he brought the Israelites through, he can bring you through. Just as he's bringing the church through, he can continue to bring generation after generation. Trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. Not only can he wash away your teeth, but he can also place your feet on a solid foundation. Who is that solid foundation? Somebody say, there you go, Jesus is that solid foundation. He's a rock in the real land. He's bread for the hungry. He's power for the weakness. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Put your trial before the Lord. Tell him about your sorrow. Tell him about you meet your needs. And he promises to answer your prayer. The greatest need that we have is salvation. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, 
and I will give you rest. He didn't say Nate going to give you rest, all right, because I can't help myself. He says, I, the one that created the heavens and the earth, I, the one that spoke and everything came into existence. There was nothing made that was not made by the Lord. He will help you, I tell you. He will give you the victory of all that Satan tried to do. Do you believe that today? Somebody say, victory is mine. I told old Satan, get thee behind. But victory is mine. He can keep you when your foot try to slip. He said, walk in me in the newness of life. And I will give you rest. All right? We have to recognize that where we walk, God wants to direct our path. Where I go, amen, God will provide a way out of no way. Are you going to trust him this morning? Are you going to lean on Just as he gave Hezekiah many more years, he can bless you with no matter what your need is. We believe that if you would receive Christ, he will in no wise cast you out. If you would call upon his name, he will provide. His name is above all names. His ways are not measured by man. All things are in his possibility. Receive him today. We open the doors of the church. We believe that God is able to provide a way out of nowhere if you would just call upon him. He has a plan for each and every one of our lives. And that plan begins with salvation. Call upon his name today. He will in no wise cast you out. Won't you come? Won't you invite him into your life? He is the conqueror of death. He is the power of salvation. If you would ask God to come into your life, if you would repent and tell God, Lord, I need you. I repent as being a sinner who's out of communication, out of fellowship with the Lord. He will come to you if you will take that step and come to him. Amen. Are you willing to come today? Receive him as your personal Savior. Is there one here today? Maybe you are in, in, in radio land. Maybe you are in, in social, on social media, media. God is there. He's omnipotent, all-powerful, and he's omniscient, all-knowing, and he's omnipresent. Wherever you are, he's there. Yeah, call upon him. Behold, he said, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open the door, I'll come in.
say, I want to thank you. I want to thank you. Yeah, Lord. And praise you too. Mm -hmm. Said it was your grace and mercy. Thank you. Said it on me too. Oh, Lord. Receive him as your Savior. Let him into your life. Go leave, leave here today talking about the grace and mercy of God. No one deserves what God can do on your behalf. Allow him to live in you. Allow him to direct your path. Amen? Amen. Receive. Amen. God bless you and may keep you is our prayer. Thank you. Amen. Oh, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Father, I want to thank you. Your grace and mercy. Say it, Lord.